Hello YouTube, this is Shadow Silver Stem APKs. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue where we left off in the last tutorial. As you remember, in the last tutorial, we were refining the mesh. We were working with the analyst mesh. In this tutorial, we're going to start working with degrees of freedom and, uh, and how they relate to vertices and how they relate uh, as we create the mesh. In this tutorial, basically, we will be working with how to visualize degrees of freedom. As you can see here, uh, the, this is from the, the website, and this is uh, the part that is very documented, like I've always told you. And it's, uh, it's one, they basically want to visualize one degree of freedom for each vertex of the triangulation and create and, and, and put it on a sparse matrix so you can see it. What is a sparse matrix? I'm going to explain to you in a little bit. Uh, basically, think of uh, this got a lot of dead space or that represents zeros. But uh, I will, we will go into that in one moment. Before, I just wanted to explain a little bit more about the code. So basically, they just want to visualize the pattern of non-zero entries resulting from the distribution of degrees of freedom on the grid. And, and, and they are creating a, fi a finite element here file that they're using to manipulate degree of freedom tools and a lot of cool stuff that we that will become handy later on as we start working with uh, vertices meshes and degrees of freedom so this is just to visualize it so you can see it and uh, here is, is, is also explained uh, we would like to associate we would like to associate degree of freedom numbers to each vertex or line or cell in case we're using higher order elements to later generate matrices and vectors which describe a finite element field on the triangulation so that's why is uh, the 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 idea behind it so you can see the, the imagine when you see a the a, a degree of freedom you will actually be looking so it's almost like a, it represents a, a vertex and uh, what else i want to show you here so this then corresponds to the one degree of freedom for each vertex that's just what i just said while there are none on lines and inside the quad uh continuous elements and the last one that i wanted to show you that is it's very interesting uh numbers uh, numbers first we have to create a structure where we use to store the places for non-zero elements and uh it will be show the sparsity pattern being created of course in the dead space and how it relates later in the next tutorial of how we're going to be solving the Laplace equation so um, think of these as just uh, visualizing things that are hard to explain and then in the next tutorial we'll visualize uh, the solution of the Laplace equation. So let's get started. This is the same code here, but without the comments, because as you can see, there's a lot of comments. But basically here, this is the, where the degrees of freedom handler header files, the finite element and the tools to, to manipulate degrees of freedom. This is where all of these are being included. Uh, working with sparse matrix, a dynamic sparsity pattern, and so on. They want to keep everything as close to the diagonal as possible. And I'm going to now explain to you what a sparse matrix is. For those people that don't know what a sparse matrix is, uh, let me just close this for a moment. Uh, yes. And clear these, and then just go Jupyter Notebook. And this is easy because it's, it's easy to plot on it, and we don't have to do uh, much on it. So basically, if you, I just want to show you really quick what a, 
um, sparse matrices. So I'm importing my plot matplotlib and then pylab and then it's plt and then I'm also importing scipy and spy sparse or oh, sparse and run it from the cell to make sure it's it's good and then let's create the matrix a equals I'm going to create a sparse uh, random matrix so you can see what I was talking about the dead space and I'm going to create a, let's create a 1000 by 1000 uh, and the X and the Y and let's give it the uh, density of let's give it 0 0.001 and enter and then plot spy then a and I will explain what this all means in one second here I think that's it. Shift enter. And then city. one. What did I do wrong here? There's no comma. That's why I forgot the comma here. I think that's what is wrong. So let's do it. Shift enter. And there it is. That's a uh, more or less a sparse random. There's, as you can see, there's a lot of white space here. There's a lot of dead space, and um, it's um, that's basically a random sparse matrix. It's a one thousand and one thousand, and you know you play with the density to make it less dense and more sparse, or less sparse and more dense. Uh, either way this is a uh, random what it will look like but in in the case of what we're trying to uh, accomplish with visualizing the degrees of freedom they want to create the degrees of freedom as close as possible to the diagonal so that's that's how the visualization uh, once uh, we want to create it so in this case i want to show you what uh what a sparse matrix that crowds the diagonal looks like and that is i'm going to show you here and then sparse side 100 and then i think this is it plant spy three Enter, and there you go. So basically, I'm taking a hundred um, items or, or 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 points, and then uh, creating an I I means a diagonal um, here. So it just goes through the diagonal, and all of the points crowd towards the diagonal instead of being random. So basically, we want to create not as much as that, I mean, not as exact as that, but as close as possible as to, to the diagonal. Make the points as, as, as close as possible. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So we're going to go back to the code here, close my IPython notebook, and then create, uh, start running. So let's do the... Um, I know. Actually, I ran it already. So this is the first one when you run it. Let me, because there's there's two steps on, on the code here. And here, as you can see, first you distribute the degrees of freedom, and then you create the first one. It's an SVG, um, a 
extension. It's just a, another extension. And basically this is one. And then here they're using a much better algorithm. And it's, it's, it does a much better job or is supposed to do a much better job. And we'll see that in, that in this second image being created. So this is what's happening. So this one is that function right here. Distribute degrees of freedom with the do handler, degree of freedom handler. This is the FEQ that came from right here. And degrees of freedom handler using distribute degrees of freedom using finite elements. So he's using this guy, using the dynamic sparsity pattern. And then these are all the parameters and basically here we copy it because we gotta first copy it and then use it again and basically here is used again but with the other algorithm so you're gonna see two two charts being created here the is just your main function is your triangulation making the grid which you've seen that a million times to the, the degree of handler triangulation they did distribute and then renumber renumber is is the, in the second one so this is the number degrees of freedom using the Cuthill and McKee algorithm so let's just run it now and I already it's already there so let's just show you what is here so you see a display sparsity pattern one is vg and there it is as you can see this one does very well right on the diagonal but these guys are not uh, not as close to diagonal as you can see they, they start uh, diverging and start getting further and further away so in the next uh, uh, creation of the renumbering of the degrees of freedom we show you the other one which the other one is this one right here let me close this first and control control c and then now let's show you the two so it's a different plot and as you can see, much better. As you can see, it's a lot better. And it's all concentrated around the diagonal. Okay, and that's exactly what they wanted to visualize to show you that each one of those uh, degrees of freedom represents a vertex. So this is basically we're visualizing a bunch of vertices that later on will become, each one of those vertex will represent uh, a node uh, for an element in the mesh using the finite element method. But we, we haven't got there yet. We'll get there soon. This is the end of this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please click the like box, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on GitHub, and I'll see you next time with another tutorial. Take care.